All right, so here's playing around a bit with some of the um, triggering. So I have a 7.37 megahertz clock cycle here, and um, I have an issue where there's a tiny little pulse, very short one, a bit of a glitch that can happen after certain events. This clock is generated by an FPGA by some logic for some other reasons. Um, so what I'm going to show you here is that, for example, using the width trigger, you can get the uh, get that single event where we have that one very short pulse. Obviously, if you just had edge trigger and you can't do that. So the cool other thing here is we have this buffer at the top. So you can see I can switch between the uh, the number of captures where it's captured, you know, a whole bunch of these in a row. So if we can also look at, um, I'm... I have an input waveform from a crystal oscillator on the bottom here. So then you can start to look at, you know, what is the phase delay between um, these two waveforms. Uh, so we can switch the trigger to the B one here instead of the A. Um, and you can see on the right side, I'm sampling at 1.25 giga samples per second here. So then uh, I have to reset this up. I'm going to use the persistence mode. So this lets me see sort of what the average type of delay we're seeing. Is there much jitter involved in this? Um, and I just turned off at the bottom there a constant delay. So once we have this mode, this is really cool because it makes it a lot easier to see visually what's going on in our, in our system. So this mode is often used in really high speed analysis um, for, you know, checking the I for high speed IO traces, but here you can use it sort of for anything. And it is really handy for high speed, but you'll find a lot of other uses for it too. I've been, I've been sort of playing with. And one kind of cool thing with the, the Pico scope is you can see at the bottom here, I can enable this insane delay. So this is a 200 millisecond delay, but I'm sampling at five giga samples per second. So that's a ton of samples. Um, and so it triggers and then waits a certain amount and then does this. So you can sort of see how it's varying uh, over time, over, you know, a longer period of time than right at the trigger. Um, you can just turn that on or off. So that's kind of a cool, cool feature. Again, a lot of this is really useful for all sorts of stuff when you're dealing with the stability of circuits. Um, I can also turn on the equivalent time sampling. So now we've bumped up our sample rate to effectively being around 18.8 giga samples per second. Um, and you can see the uncertainty in the equivalent time sampling. So you can see, hey, these, these traces aren't looking really pretty anymore, so to speak, not quite as, uh, straight. And that's because when we've done the equivalent time sampling, we sample this waveform several times, um, in a row and then combine it back together. If it's not exactly correct, uh, we won't get, we won't get this perfectly smooth waveform. Um, so the software is sort of showing you the uncertainty in inherent in your waveform. So and at the smallest, you can see there on the right side, 200 giga samples per second equivalent time sampling. So this is a, a five picosecond um, sample interval equivalent to, again, everything's equivalent time. So it's doing this over several traces. And if your clock, if your trigger isn't stable at all, so here's an example where the trigger is way off, something's gone wrong. So when I switch to equivalent time sampling, you know, the waveforms look insane. And what's happened is that there's a bunch of um, two different types of waveforms that are triggering together. So there I switch back to a regular trigger and you can see that. So if I move my trigger back up to where I expect it to be and switch back to equivalent time sampling, now the waveform's looking a lot better. So here I was just trying to measure some of the phase delay between um, between two different signals. And again, if you zoom in, you can see this uncertainty inherent in the, uh, the waveform due to the equivalent time sampling. But uh, that's just sort of a quick overview of some of the triggering and uh, ETS mode. And this is with the Picoscope 6000 series.